You can't keep hey, me out for your head. Like you know you did. What are you Robert. expecting him to slide? It's a damn joke. So don't do it. Come up straight up with this club. And where did he touch you? Where did he touch you? Where did he touch you? Right here on the... When you lock it back to zero... The 1973 World Series is brought to you by your local bottler of Coca-Cola in association with Major League Baseball. 1972's world champion Oakland A's are back to defend their title with virtually the same cast that performed a rave reviews in the upset win over Cincinnati. This time, the A's are the favorites, and one prominent reason is American League's most valuable player, Reggie Jackson, who watched last year's classic on crutches. Direct from Broadway, the New York Mets success story featured a fantastic comeback that saw them rush from last place on August 30th all the way to the National League crown. This is the Mets' second World Series appearance, but their starting lineup is dramatically changed from the miracle year of 1969. Managers Yogi Bear and Dick Williams both face lineup problems. The Mets' leading RBI man, Rusty Staub, is severely hampered by a damaged shoulder. And the A's fleet-footed center fielder Bill North is out with an injured ankle. A last-minute request to activate infielder Manny Trio was denied. And the Oakland roster is one man short. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mr. Barra, we've been, I know we've been denied putting Trio on. Uh, we uh, are allowed having him in uniform. Yeah. Along yeah. with Bill North. In Bill North, right. Would you object to Mr. Trio being in our bullpen? I don't care, as long as the fight starts, he stays there. Well, he's too far to <laughs> And just a gorgeous day here in Oakland, California. A bright, sunshiny afternoon, temperature in the 70s, and a slight breeze blowing out from home plate to center field. The weatherman says we're going to have good weather for game two also tomorrow. Hi, everybody. I'm Kurt Gowdy, and on behalf of NBC Sports, Welcome to the World Series. And will the real New York Mets stand up for the 73 World Series? I don't mean the team that struggled most of the year and finally wound their division just three games over 500. I mean the team that won 20 of their last 28 games and then out pitched and out hit the Cincinnati Reds for the National League champs. They're healthy, that's the team. And the Oakland A's are the defending world champs. They have been made the favorites to win this series, but they think they're gonna have an intense struggle in beating the Mets. Two left-handers today. John Matlack, a brilliant young left-hander, on the mound for the New York Mets. Ken Holtzman for the Oakland A's. And two players will be starting in center field who didn't think they'd be there for the opening of the series. Willie Mays for the New York Mets. Reggie Jackson in center field today for the Oakland A's. Speaking of the A's, a man who's seen every A's game the last 12 years, been an outstanding broadcaster for them. Monty Moore is our colleague here. Monty, let me ask you something. Is this Oakland team this season better than the team that won the world title last year? Kurt, we think it is for several reasons. Number one, uh, Reggie Jackson is here today. He wasn't in the World Series last year, and he led the league in home runs and RBIs. Ray Fossey is better behind the plate. We are better defensively as a catcher. And this year we have a better bullpen, uh, even with Raleigh Fingers as good as he was last year. And Vida Blue is here as a starter this year. So, yes, I think we're better. All right, we're ready down on the field now. We're going to have the introduction of the players of the Mets and the Oakland A's, and then we'll have the ceremonial first pitch. So let's join the activities down on the field here at the Oakland Coliseum. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Oakland Alameda County Coliseum for the first game of the 1973 World Series. Here are the official lineups. First. The New York Mets. Here's the manager of the New York Mets, number eight, Yogi Berra. Batting first and playing third base, number 11, Wayne Garrett. Batting second and playing second base, number 16, Felix Mion.
Batting third and playing center field, number 24, Willie May. Fifth and playing first base, number 28, John Milner. Batting sixth, the catcher, number 15, Jerry Grody. Batting seventh and playing right field, number 25, Don Hahn. Batting eighth and playing shortstop, number three, Bud Harrelson. Batting ninth and pitching today, number 32, John Matlack, who's warming up in the bullpen. And here are the remaining players and coaches of the New York Mets. Number four, Rusty Staub. Number five, Jim Beecham. Number seven, Ed Cranepool. Number nine, George Theodore. Number 10, warming up, Ron Matlack. Duffy Dyer. Number 12, Ken Boswell. Number 17, Teddy Martinez. Number 31, Harry Parker. Number 33, Ray Sadecki. Number 36, Jerry Kuzman. Number 38, Buzz Capra. Number 40, George Stone. Number 41, Tom Seaver. Number 42, Ron Hodges. Number 43, Jim McAndrew. And number 45, Doug McGraw. And the coaches, number 51, Roy McMillan. Number 52, Joe Pignatano. Number 53, Eddie Yost. And number 54, Rube Walker. And now for the defending world champion, Oakland A's. Here is the manager of the A's, Dick Williams. <laughs> Batting first and playing shortstop, number 19, Campy Campanaris. <laughs> Batting second and playing left field, number 26, Joe Rudy. Batting third and playing third base, number six, the captain of the A's, Captain Sal Bando. <laughs> Batting fourth and playing center field, number nine, Reggie Jackson. <laughs> Batting fifth and playing first base, number 18, Gene Tennis. <laughs> Batting sixth and playing right field, number 22, Jesus Alou. Batting seventh, the catcher, number 10, Ray Fossey. <laughs> Batting eighth and playing second base, number one, Dick Green. <laughs> Batting ninth and pitching today for Oakland, number 30, Ken Holtzman, warming up in the bullpen. Warming up, Ken Holtzman, number 44, Vern Hoshite. 
And here are the remaining players and coaches of the Oakland A's. Number two, Angel Mongol. Number four, Bill North. Number seven, Darren Johnson. Number eight, Manny Trio. Number 11, Ted Kubiak. Number 13, John Blubonoto. Number 14, Vida Blue. Number 16, Billy Canigliaro. Number 17, Mike Andrews. Number 24, Alan Lewis. Number 25, Paul Lindblad. Number 27, Jim Catfish Hunter. Number 28, Horacio Pena. Number 32, Daryl Moll. Number 34, Raleigh Finger. Number 37, Vic Davileo. And number 38, Pat Burke. And the coaches, number 41, Jerry Adair. Number 42, Wes Stock. And number 43, Irv Thorin. Bearing the colors today is the United States Army Military Police Color Guard from the Presidio in San Francisco. For the opening game of the 1973 World Series, the national anthem will be sung by Jim Neighbors. And now to honor America, let us all join in singing the national anthem. So proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous light or oh, the ramparts we watched were so gallant. back to the ceremonial first pitch of game one of the 1973 World Series in just a moment. Commissioner Bowie Kuhn and American League President Joe Cronin get full cooperation from the weatherman and the sun-bathed California crowd welcomes Henry Aaron. Hammerin' Henry Aaron is the first active player to throw the ceremonial first pitch at a World Series and with good reason. As the 1973 season concluded, Aaron's career home run total is 713, just one shy of the legendary Babe Ruth. Between Aaron and Willie Mays, there's a combined total of 1,373 home runs in the Oakland Coliseum today, and the Bay Area fans greet Willie with a standing ovation. We are honored this afternoon 
to have one of baseball's all time greats throughout the first ball. His 713 home runs are just one behind the career record of Babe Ruth, the incomparable Henry Era. pitch like he does everything else without a flourish just getting his job done year after year game after game and it seems strange money to see him behind the American League dugout today yes it really does Kurt and uh, we were talking about this before the ball game but Henry has been out here on the West Coast making some appearances and I understand he has some more to make real soon well we're delighted he could be here today to throw out the first pitch it's only fitting for the drama he's brought to baseball this year. That's the Oakland dugout. They're taking the field. They get a roar. Six umpires assigned to the game. Behind the plate, Marty Springstead of the American League. The veteran is the first base umpire, Augie Donatelli of the National League. Gary Newdecker of the American League working second base. Paul Pryor of the National League at third. Russ Getz of the American League down the left field line. And Harry Wendelstead of the National League will be working the right field line. The first World Series for all three of the American League umpires. Kenneth Dale Holtzman, who pitched his best game of the series in the playoffs against Baltimore last Tuesday. Two to one victory, 11 innings, allowing just three hits. Walked only one. He had tremendous stuff and had his control. He struck out seven in that game. The only run he allowed was a home run by Earl Williams. He had 10 days rest before that game, and he said he needed the rest. We'll take a look at him in slow motion so you can study the motion. Tony? Against Baltimore, he threw primarily fastballs. I guess of about 110 or 15 pitches he threw, he threw just eight breaking pitches. I think it's going to be a surprise for this Mets team to see a different Kenny Holtzman than he remember when he pitched for the Chicago Cubs. He's had trouble with the New York Mets. His lifetime record while he was in the National League with the Cubs, four wins, nine losses against the Mets. And he didn't beat them the last two years he was in the National League. The first batter of the 1973 World Series, the 70th World Series, by the way, is Wayne Garrett, who had a sizzling month of September to lead the Mets in the batting average for that month. But he's had a poor playoff with the bat. He had only two hits and 23 times up in the playoffs. His seasonal average was 256. They play him a couple of steps toward right. And the first pitch of the series is pop foul out of play. Garrett usually goes for the first pitch. I was about to warn you of that. He's a first ball hitting batter. Leon is on deck. And then Willie Mays. Garrett born in Brooksville, Florida. Lives in Sarasota, Florida. Curveball has popped up. Sal Bando, the third baseman's there. And we have the first out of the series. Before Felix Leon steps in, I want to tell you that this telecast is presented by authority of Major League Baseball, is intended solely for the private, non commercial use of our audience. Any publication, reproduction, retransmission, or other use of the pictures, descriptions, and accounts of this game without the express written consent of the Commissioner of Baseball is prohibited. Felix Mion, according to some experts, the most underrated player in this World Series. He hit 290 for the season, and he hit 316 in the playoffs. He slaps the ball around, ball one to him. You'll notice how he chokes up on the bat. Extreme. Choking up with a hand. The ground ball hits sharply to Dick Green. Green over the first base, two down. <laughs> Willie Mays coming up. Listen to the hand for him. <laughs> Willie Mays. <laughs> Forty two years old across the bay cheered today by American League fans. There's a drive foul down the right field line. 
We pause briefly for station identification. This is the NBC television network. A 3-2 delivery. Mays hits a ground ball, a base hit in the left field. Well, he's on. Usually loses his cap in the outfield. He lost it when he left home plate. There's the first hit of the series, and Willie Mays gets it. This series right here means more to me than I think anything in baseball because I came in as a winner and I'm going out as a winner and I feel that uh, to go out as a champion means a great deal to me and I think it means a great deal to the fans all over America. With Rusty Stop sideline, Mays is a starter and records the first hit of the 73 series with a single to left off Ken Holtzman. One significant factor shown in that picture right there in the two leagues. The National League players must wear a batting helmet batting, but on the base pads, they don't have to. The American League runners have to wear the helmet on the base pad. Leon Jones, a disappointing first half of the season for the Mets. But how he got going in those last 28 games, wound up with a 260 average, 11 homers, 48 RBIs, and he hit 300 in the playoffs. He can hit the ball to right center with power. That's where they're playing him. It's a strike. Reggie Jackson's in right center for him. And Jesus Salou is shading the right field line. They leave the open area in left center. Mays at first, two down. Willie stole only one base this year. There's a bounding ball sharply to the box. Holtzman throws him out in the side to side. No runs, one hit, no errors, one left. The first half inning gone is 0 0. And there he is, Jonathan Trump Bauer Matlack, who pitched the greatest game of his life last Sunday, a two hitter against the Cincinnati Reds. 14 wins, 16 losses, the hardest throwing left hander in the National League. He was rookie of the year in 1972. And every time a National League club or an American League club has talked trade with the Mets, First, they know they can't get Seaver. The man that is most sought after is Matlack. Kurt, there was a scouting report that was not too accurate on John Matlack. When the A's met before this ball game, and yesterday they said he does not have a good fastball. He's a breaking ball pitcher. Darren Johnson, a former National Leaguer, stood up and said, wait a second. He's about an inch behind fastball-wise Tom Seaver. He's got a good one. Well, he struck out 205 batters in 210 innings, or 242 innings. He was up in the top four. He finished third in strikeouts in the National League. And here's Bert Campanaris leading off, who had 250 on the year, a strike to him, and had a hit in every one of the playoff games. The only player of the Baltimore and Oakland squads to do so. He was just super in the playoffs. Matt Lack delivers a curve. It's fouled away. Strike two. On deck will be Joe Rudy. And then Sal Bando. This is a primarily right-handed hitting batter in batting order for Oakland. Jackson's a left-handed hitter and Holtzman. It seems strange to see that pitcher back in the number nine spot in the American League. I want to talk about that in a minute. Campanaris pops it up. Out to Felix Mion, the Mets second baseman is one down. In interleague play, the designated batting rule is not in effect. We asked Dick Williams before the game, would it be a disadvantage to his team. He said no. Fair for one, fair for all. We have some good hitting pitchers. They've been practicing. Joe Rudy hit 270 for the year. One ball, one strike to Joe Rudy. There's a drive in the center field that is stabbed by Bud Harrelson. The outstanding little shortstop of the Mets who has the range, the steady hands, and a good arm. Ball not hit hard, hit off the end of the bat. I think Matlack pulled the string a little bit. Harrelson had a long way to go and just caught it like an ice cream cone in the webbing of his glove. That's where this team has improved so immensely with Mian, his steadiness. Harrelson coming off to the injury list. Sal Bando, the captain of the A's, hit 288 for the year. 29 homers, 98 runs batted in. His best year. And he looks at a high curve, ball one. Matlack. He is fairly consistent. The 1 1 delivery to Bando with two down, nobody on. There's a fly ball out to left field on a changeup. Jones takes it and the side's out. 1 2 3. At the end of the first inning, 0 0. John Matlack, the Mets' hottest pitcher down the pennant stretch, 
breezes through the first two innings with some help from shortstop Bud Harrelson. We talked to John Miller, the hitter step, stepping in right now against Kenny Holtzman, about batting against Holtzman. He's never seen him before. Let's hear what he had to say. Well, uh, he's a left-hander. Now, they say he threw the ball real well. He was throwing it when he was in the National League. And uh, I expect he look for some hard stuff in and uh, maybe the breaking ball away. Say so he changed speeds a lot. I don't know why. He, I don't think he'll turn it over to me. So uh, I'll be mostly looking for the hard stuff in and breaking ball away. And it's ball one, strike one now. John Milner, Jerry Grody, Don Hahn for the Mets in the second inning. Milner didn't hit too much the last month. They call him the Hammer. He's from East Point, Georgia, born in Atlanta, Georgia. He's young. He's just 23 years old. He has that lively bat, though. The ball jumps off. He, uh, he has good power. 23 homers. He should be a good one for the future for the Mets. There's a fly ball out into left center. Reggie Jackson's over there. And we have one down. The regular center fielder of the A's is Bill North, who had an outstanding season. Playing well defensively, stealing over 50 bases. He has a bad ankle, and he is not on the active list. And so with a left-hander going today, and Jesus Alou swinging a hot bat, they move Jackson from right to center. This is the first time Jackson's played center field this year, right, uh, Monty? That's right, Kurt. And uh, in spring training, he never was even in a game down there because we had five men fighting for that job, and they wanted to leave Reggie in right field. And a lose in right field. The batter is Grody, who hit 256 for the season with one homer, 32 RBIs, and they're playing him to right field. One out, nobody on. We have no score in the second inning. There's a ground ball to the right side. Green up with it. Throws to tennis. We have two down. The A's infield. Bandos at third. Campanaris at short. Green at second. Tennis playing first. Rudy's the left fielder. Jackson's the center fielder. And Jesus Salou the right fielder. Ray Fossey behind the plate. Don Hahn, born in San Francisco, lives in Campbell, California. 229 hitter. Not much with a bat, but a fine defensive player. Foul ball for strike one. Interesting to see after the scouting reports where these outfielders play the batters. You try to go to right field with that, a strike two. A lot depends on who's pitching. Curve a strike three, and Holt and sails through the second. At the end of an inning and a half, 0-0. Zero, zero. Two former Major League stars are in the coaching boxes today for the A's. Irv Norn, an outfielder for 11 years, is coaching at third. And Jerry Adair, who used to be a fine defensive second baseman, is coaching at first base. Reggie Jackson, Gene Tennis, and Jesus Salou are the three scheduled batters for the A's in the last of the second. Jackson and Tennis did not deliver in the playoffs. They did not drive in a run. Jackson who led the American League with 32 homers, 117 RBIs, and hit a healthy 293. But he injured a hamstring muscle at the end of the year. Then he, uh, I think he had a virus, didn't he, Monty? He had a strep throat that strep throat. set him down for the last three games and then the first four days of practice prior to the playoffs. So he probably uh, lost some timing, lost the groove in his swing. The strike, and he's going up against left-handed pitching in this series except for Tom Seaver. Tomorrow it'll be Kuzman and uh, Vita Blue left-handers again. We'll have right-handers Tuesday night at Shea Stadium. A ball, Tom Seaver and Catfish Hunter. Boy, that's quite a matchup. They're all good matchups. Both clubs have outstanding pitching. Free 20 game winners for the A's and you all know how good the Mets are in the pitching department. A 1-1 delivery. Jackson, strike two. One ball, two strikes. The on-deck batter is Gene Tennis, the most valuable player of the 1972 World Series. Jackson hits a hopper to Bud Harrelson. And the little Mets shortstop puts him away, and there's one down in the last of the second for the A's. Dick Williams. 
who has won three pennants now as a manager. 67, 72, 67 with the Red Sox. 72 and 73 here with the A's. Gene Tennis hit 258 this year. 24 homers for tennis, 84 RBIs. That's a strike. Somebody is supposed to have gone into the dugout today and uh, talked to Yogi, one of the writers. You know, there are a million Yogi Berra stories over the years. A strike. And they said, you know, we know all about the pitching and batting. How about the intangibles? And Yogi is supposed to have said, well, the only two guys I know are Campaneris and Davileo. <laughs> Couldn't be true. Two strikes to Gene Tennis. Tennis strikes out on a lightning fastball. First strikeout for Matt Lack, who says he's not as nervous today as he was in the playoffs. Said, I was scared to death last Sunday at Cincinnati. He should be frightened out of his mind every day. Two down, nobody on. Jesus Salou. Picked up by the A's from the Houston. Astros in August wound up hitting 306 in the American League. He had two hits six times up in the playoffs. And like Willie Mays, he used to be across the bay with the Giants. In fact, one afternoon, the three Alou brothers, Matty, Philippe, and Jesus, played the outfield for the San Francisco Giants. He hits it off the bat handle to first baseman Miller, and Matlack just overpowered them in the second inning. Three up, three down at the end of two. Nothing to nothing. A happy 47th birthday today to Eddie Yost, coaching a third for the New York Mets. Roy McMillan, who four times led the National League as the best fielding shortstop, 16 years in the National League, is coaching at first. And Bud Harrelson will lead off for the Mets in the third inning. Ball one to him. You fans that uh, take a look now at the center field, either to the left or to the right of that open area. If it's not a sellout, they put a green tarp over there to give the batter a green background. I think they're having trouble seeing the ball today with those fans with their white shirt sleeves. And Kurt, you see that one little white strip of concrete that shows right there. The ball comes right out of that. Holtzman's last pitch came right out of that white concrete. There's just a little bit of it, but it's above the fence right there. Watch where the ball comes. There it is, right out of it. And uh, Tony Kubat, I'd like to have him comment. It doesn't take much to lose that ball, does it, Tony, in the neither, background? Neither Holtzman or Matlack, as overpowering, as overpowering as they can be, need that. The ball comes out dark. You cannot see the spin on the ball. Change of speeds are very effective. He has walked Harrelson on four pitches. But it hit 258. He, uh, by the way, was graduated from Sunset High in Hayward, California, very close to the Oakland Coliseum. And he attended San Francisco State College. Kurt John a, Matlack is up now. He was a 135 pound quarterback in high school football here and the captain of three different teams basketball, baseball, and football. Well, he's a spirited competitor. The score is nothing, nothing in the third inning. They're looking for the bunt and they have green charging. There's a play for you. The second baseman, Green, came charging in with a first baseman holding tennis. You don't see that too often. Kurt, we didn't see it much this year because of the designated hitter rule. The pitchers weren't up to bunt that much, but Green did that a whole lot last year for the A's. That means Campaneris would cover second. This time he holds back the bunt. Holtzman picks it up, throws to Green. Matlack lays down a perfect sacrifice and moves Bud Harrelson into scoring position. Kurt Dick Williams, famous, of course, for trick plays. His team works on it all spring training. And Monty, you probably know of more of these plays seeing this club all year long. Sal Bando has a lot to do with calling these, doesn't he? He calls every one of them after he gets the sign from Dick Williams, and all the infielders take a look at Bando for the signs, which he'll usually give us face signs or on the shirt. All right, we have our first man in scoring position. Bud Harrelson at second, one out. The Mets and the A's are nothing, nothing. It's the top of the order. Garrett's the batter. Strike on the high fastball. Garrett fouled out his first time up. Wayne Garrett with 16 homers has some punch for an infielder. One out, Harrelson at second. A pop up down the first baseline. They give way to Gene Tennis, and he has it in foul ground. They're two down. That's twice. 
that Garrett has popped up. Felix Mion comes up. Usually makes contact. He grounded out his first time. Kurt, there's a factor here, too. Uh, the grass in the outfield at this ballpark is very thick, and there has not been a football game played on it to tear it up in about a month. So the ball will roll fairly slowly going out there, and that could help a runner also. Al Davis of the Oakland Raiders thinks he may never get back in here again. There's a bounding ball to Bando at third. He'll go to first. Wide throw in time. Bando is usually very accurate, but he nearly threw that one away. No runs, no hits. One man left. Two and a half gone. Zero, zero. And a very attractive football baseball doubleheader on NBC tomorrow. We'll begin with NFL football at 1 p.m. You'll see either Baltimore at Buffalo, O.J. running wild this year, New York at New England, or Pittsburgh at Cincinnati, followed by Game 2 of the World Series with the baseball world of Joe Garagiola beginning at 4 p.m. Check your local listing for the NFL game in your area. We're in the last of the third inning here in the Oakland Coliseum. The first six A's batters up have been retired, and they'll send up Fosse, Green, and Holtzman to face John Matlack. One hit in the game, that's been by Willie Mays. There's a high pop, twisting outside first. John Milner scrambling for it. He has it, there's one down. And John Matlack is picking right up where he left off last Sunday in Cincinnati. And there's one of those uh, foul pops occurred out in no man's land here at the Oakland Coliseum. That one didn't really go that far off the foul line, but it was very close to what would have been in the seats in another park. He has some punch to right center, although they're playing him straight away. He can drive a ball deep into right center, especially a pitch high and outside over the plate. Two balls and a strike. Curt, he had a grand slam home run against the California Angels to win a game this year that knocked Bobby Valentine, who was an outstanding center fielder for uh, the Angels, because Bobby made a try for the ball and ran into the fence and shattered his leg. All four, Green is on, and you saw Ken Holtzman on deck which was a strange spot for him because the American League this year, the pitchers have not hit. Holtzman did come up one time. He's one of the better hitting pitchers. He walked in that one time up. Catfish Hunter is the best hitting pitcher in this team. And Holtzman is right with him there, right behind him. Be interesting to see if not bunting all season long against game-type competition will affect the bunting of these pitchers from Oakland. Tony Dick Williams said they've been taking a lot of extra Bunning practice, special drills on bunning. They brought in Bernie DeViveros of the Detroit Tiger organization, one of the outstanding bunning coaches to teach him. There's a bunt foul ball. Strike one to Ken Holtzman. Holtzman squares away again and tries to bunt. There's a man going to second, and he's out at second base. Bud Harrelson took the throw. Brody right on the button with it. Kurt, this is one thing we should see a lot of in this series. Two fine catchers with good, quick throwing arms, good mobility. Grody keeping the ball out in front of him. Here comes Green. He thought the ball had bounded away a little bit farther, but Grody was on it like a cat with a perfect throw to Harrelson. Ray Fossey threw four of five Orioles out attempting to steal in the American League playoffs. You're right, Tony. There's a sharp ground ball. Base hit by Holtzman. He makes the turn. He's going for two. The throw. He's in with a double. Another problem, not to hit the host. We got a course, but pitchers are going to have should they get on base. Look at Holston right now. He hit the base awfully hard. Remember, he has not slid all season long. Watch how Lady slides and he wrist injury. He still has his head bent over at second base. Look at him hit that bag. That's just the inexperience this season of not having had the slide. In this, the first year of the American League's designated hitter, Ken Holtzman finds himself in a very unfamiliar situation at bat. Holtzman's failure to sacrifice allows Jerry Grody to gun down Dick Green. And now Holtzman will swing away with two out and the base is empty. Holtzman's surprise double is the first hit off Matt Lack. And the A's leadoff man, Bert Campanaris, comes up. He can fly to first base, puts the pressure on infielders. They know they have to unload quickly. 
Kurt, it will be interesting, too, to see these A's and how they will attempt to run on Willie Mays and the ball hit to him because he cannot throw well anymore. And Irv Norris should really zing those men around third base and anything hit in Mays' direction. Mays has a bad throwing shoulder now. The two-strike delivery. A ground ball to the right side. Neon lets the ball go through his leg. And here is the score, Hofner. Right through the legs of Felix Neon, who went down for it. Not hit well, backing up on the ball. Neon showing a little insecurity. World Series pressure, I don't know, but he came up too soon, went down on that knee, and he was a dead man, letting the ball play him. If Holtzman felt strange at the plate, imagine how he must feel on the base paths. Holtzman is home free, and the A's take a 1-0 lead. On the replay, Campanaris' routine grounder skips right under Felix Mion. Mr. Consistent for the Mets at second, Mion had committed only nine errors all season long. With Joe Rudy up, Matt Lack wants to check Campanaris. Campy swiped 34 bases during the year, and the Mets don't want him in scoring position. Here we go. A high throw, and Campanaris is in the second. Matt Lack made a high throw. Milner couldn't handle it cleanly, and Campanaris slides as a stolen base. And Kurt, he gets a jump. Too good of a jump, and fortunately that Miller made a good leap and saved the ball from going in that right field corner with all this foul territory. I believe Campy could have scored. Matt Lack's move traps Campanaris, but the pickoff throw is too high, and Campy has his stolen base anyway. Kurt, interestingly enough, Monty, in the Mets scouting report on the right-handed hitting power of this A's team, they listed Rudy as the most dangerous hitter from the right side in the clutch situation, even over Bando and Tennis and Darren Johnson. I think Baltimore had just about the same report, according to some of their players. One ball, two strikes to Joe Rudy. Campanaris at second, two down. Rudy drills it into right field. Here's Campanaris coming in to score. And the A's lead 2 nothing. There would be the reason, Kurt, right there, is that he is more apt to go the opposite way with the outside pitch than either Bando or Tennis. Charlie Finley and his banner group down there in back of the A's dugout up, waving those banners again that were so dominant during the World Series last year. Here's Sal Bando. He fly to left his first time. Two outs, Rudy at first. Two runs in. And there's a base hit in the center field by Bando. Rudy makes the turn. May fumbles the ball, and Rudy comes on the third. Mays will probably be given an error. He charged the ball well. The ball bounced up. Rudy had stopped at second base. Watch Willie. He's... Rudy had pulled to a stop at second base as the ball bounds off his wrist, and then thought back to those scouting reports instinctively said he can't throw. Jackson hits a high fly ball down the left field line. Jones coming on. That's the Sunfield. And Harrelson makes a good play crossing the line to grab it. Two runs. Three hits. Two errors. Two left. At the end of three, two nothing Oakland. We're going now to the fourth inning. Kurt Gowdy, Monty Moore, and Tony Kubek from Oakland. Willie Mays, Cleon Jones, and John Milner. Holtzman's outside for a ball. Ken Holtzman now in postseason play in his last 12 innings has allowed no runs and two hits. Mays sends a bounding ball to Bando. Right on target, there's one out. And the number two and three home run hitters of all time. There's the number two man, and you just saw the number three man bounce out. Cleon Jones hit a hot one hopper back to the box in the first inning and was thrown out. One strike pitch. 
There's a drive hit deep in the left center. That's that open gap up against the wall. It didn't matter. Jones comes into second with a ringing double, and that's base hit number two for the Mets. Oh, with one out, Jones at second. The next batter will be John Milner, who fly to center in his initial trip. There's a base hit into center. It's charged by Jackson. Jones is waved on. Jackson's throw. They let the man go down to second and go to the backstop. Jackson tried to throw him out, didn't have a chance, didn't hit his cutoff man, and allowed Miller to get the second on the throw to the plate. And that's the tying run at this point. Jackson with an exceptionally strong throwing arm, violating a cardinal rule of defensive play for an outfielder, overthrowing that man in cutoff position. Cleon Jones doubles in the Mets fourth, and Holzman faces John Milner. Jones scores, and Miller moves to second on the throw to the plate. Now it's two to one, Oakland. One out for the Mets with John Milner at second. Jerry Grody, the batter, grounded out his first time. There's a drive in the left center. Jackson back, back, back. On the run, he has it. He saved the run there. Reggie Jackson playing center field for the first time this year. Flagged that one down and saved the run. And Grody would have had a sure double at least. Here he goes back to left center field. Holzman making mistakes inside. They've been playing these right-handed hitters toward right center field. He got rid of the ball quickly, holding that runner at second base. Good play, Reggie. Now they go to the box. And while they're conferring there to find out about Holzman, who's been slapped hard here by the last three batters, we pause briefly for station identification. This is the NBC television network. Nick Williams studying Holtzman. Ken Holtzman's ninth professional season began in the Cubs organization back in 65. His 3-2 delivery is ball four, and the Mets have runners on first and second, two out. The next batter is Bud Harrelson, who walked his first time. He's a switch hitter. No balls, two strikes. Struck him out through the fastball right by. One run, two hits, two left. The end of three and a half. It is two to one Oakland. Last of the fourth inning, Gene Tennis is up. Strike one to him. Tennis hits the fly ball in the left field. Leon Jones will be there, and there's one out. That's the sun field here in Oakland. And along about this time of day, it's a mean sun field. That sun perks right up above the top of the stadium. The stands look dark to the outfielder. Jesus Alou popped up his first time. Now here's the uh, left field area looking in. Now you see how dark the stands are. And then you go up above and you run into that bright sky. There's a drive deep. That ball is going. It is. On the warning path, it suddenly stuck. That ball looked like it was going out, and it suddenly did a nosedive, and it even fooled Cleon Jones. He was backing up to the wall, getting ready to spring and try and rob a Louisville home run, and suddenly the ball had top spin and sunk right down. I think also he was bothered by that sun we just talked about, apparently making a catch before it hit the ground. The wind appears to be blowing out the center field slightly, but that wind apparently circles around in your body and holds some balls up. Nobody on for the A's in the last of the fourth. Ray Fossey fouled out his first time. A's ahead, two to one. Big hopper to shortstop Harrelson. His throw, and the A's are gone, one, two, three. At the end of four innings, it's Oakland two and New York one. Matlack leading off for the Mets. The bottom of the order in the fifth inning. He sacrificed his first time. The ball to him. Ball two to the weak hitting pitcher, two and nothing. Look at this, ball three. He hasn't been near the strike zone. Most managers will mutter and say they'll do it every time. And once again, we get warm up action. Daryl Knowles now and Raleigh Fingers, and here's West Stock, the pitching coach, coming out. 
Now they have the two aces of the bullpen getting ready. Knowles, the left-hander, who missed the World Series last year with a broken finger, and Raleigh Fingers, who saved the deciding game and was outstanding against Cincinnati. 3-2 pitch. He walked in. Third walk given up by Ken Holston, and he walks the pitcher. Well, he's walked Harrelson, the number eight hitter, in the third, and he walks the pitcher to start the fifth. Wayne Garrett, at the top of the order, has hit two foul pops so far. They're looking for the bunt. Bando shortened up at third. And uh, pop to Holtzman. He throws to first. Double play. Garrett pops into a double play, attempting the bunt. Holtzman to the first base for tennis. Holtzman with a pretty good fastball getting on in on the fists. I don't know if they had some kind of trick play on there again if Green was coming in. Here it is again. For a while, I think Holtzman thought of trapping the ball, but he was yelled at by his catcher, Fosse, that Matlock had gotten off too far, and they got him behind him. That's our first double play. The Mets have two down, nobody on, and Felix Mion up. And there's a drive hit deep to left. They were playing him shallow. Rudy's back. Rudy lost the ball in the sun. Mion is in the second and coming for third. Mion. They played him shallow, and he hit the ball over Rudy's head. Rudy got out there. When he turned around, I'm sure that right sun bothered him there in the sun field. Mian using out with this kind of power. Rudy knew he had to go fast to the warning track, then turned around too soon, then had a problem with the sun. He was all twisted up. Jackson, who was playing in right center field, couldn't get over in time to back him up. Now the tying run at third base. Brilliant sunshine is fine for the spectators, but not so for the fielders. You can say that Rudy had all kinds of problems mm. on that play. A triple for Felix Mion. Mays hits a high fly ball to right fielder Jesus Salou. The sides retire. No run for the Mets. One hit, no error. They left one. We're halfway through, and it's Oakland 2, New York 1. Well, a tight one is expected. Four and a half innings gone here in Oakland, and it's the Oakland A's 2, the New York Mets 1. Now we're going to turn the play-by-play -play over to Monty Moore, who's broadcast the A's games here the last 12 years. Mr. Kubek in the background. We'll be analyzing the reruns. Bonnie, it's all yours. Thank you very much, Kurt. Hi, once again, everybody. Dick Green will lead off for Oakland in the last half of the fifth inning. It'll be followed by the pitcher, Kenny Holtzman and Bert Campanera. So far, New York has one run on four hits. They've made two errors. The A's have two runs on three hits, and they've played airlessly in the field. So, Denley, we're going to have a pinch hitter for Kenny Holtzman. So he has gone five innings and will be gone. Mike Andrews is on deck and he will be a pinch hitter for Oakland. So that will be the designated hitter and the first time its effects will be felt by not being in this ball game. Green trying to go to right field. And even though Holtzman got him out there in the top of the fifth, evidently Dick Williams didn't like the way he was struggling. He's high with his fastball and he just doesn't want him to get in serious trouble, suddenly get shelled. They'll probably come on with fingers. Greeny threw the bat as he struck out on the curveball, and it went all the way off third base. The reason that is is that Dick has a sore finger, and he throws the bat a lot when he's fooled on a pitch. Chain speeds, a pitch that's hard to see with the kind of background these hitters have with those white shirts. Green way out in front. And now they've called Andrews back, Monty. And it'll be Angel Manguel batting for Kenny Holtzman rather than Mike Andrews. And it is going to be Raleigh Fingers. He has just started to warm up again in the A's bullpen. He'll come in to pitch the sixth inning. I think one difference uh, here, Dick Williams does this. He expected that Dick Green would get on. There's Raleigh. And Andrews is an excellent bunter. Angel Manguel is more likely, if he hits the ball, to drive it for distance. 
Van Gwell batted only 224 for Oakland this year, but he hit three home runs and he played very, very little. Played almost none at all from July until the last three weeks or two weeks when Billy North was injured. Nice play by Bud Harrelson, the shortstop by the Mets. Well, he's made one going to his left and one going to his right today. He has the range. This is getting a jump on the ball. Manguel didn't hit it all that well. He was hit right on the fist, it looked like, by a good pitch. And Harrelson got a good, quick break off of it because it was in on the batter. Harrelson playing the last six weeks of this season and through the playoffs the same as he did in 1969 with that great range. And he's been instrumental in getting these Mets to this World Series. Here's Bert Campanaris. Matt Lex curve is low. No, Monty, we, we're seeing a lot of good shortstops now in the major league. Two good ones here today, Campanaris and Harold. You almost have to have one to win. In the playoffs, Baltimore, of course, has Mark Belanger, one of the very best, and both he and Campanaris made four or five throws out of the deep hole at shortstop to get runners at first base. Matlack's gone to a curve and it's a good one right now. He's had it down. It's a ball and two strikes on Campanaris. Tried to go to right with that one, but Matlack threw it by him. After five innings, the score two to one, Oakland. Raleigh Fingers, the new pitcher, throws a big breaking slider. Holtzman in five innings gave up one run on four hits. He walked three and struck out two. Raleigh Fingers. One of the top relief pitchers in baseball this year won seven and lost eight but had 22 saves for the A's with a very fine earned run average of 1.92 and he's facing Cleon Jones with a count one and one. He's extremely rough on right handers with a sidearm slider sidearm sinking fastball. Base hit. Fingers has to give in a little bit when he gets three balls two strikes and Jones socked it right up the middle. So the Mets have out hit the A's five to three and here is Milner. Raleigh was born in Steubenville Ohio but grew up in Cucamonga California. Ray Fossey calls for that one. He has only one play. That's the first. Jones goes to second on the full swinging bunt by Milner. We talked about the fine catching in this ball game today. Watch Fossey get out from behind that plate. Removing the mass, we can get a good, clear picture of the ball. No chance for the play at second. Oh, he has a quick release, doesn't he? He did another thing too well. He picked the ball up using the mitt. Rake it over in a two-hand pickup, and the best thing he did, of course, was the communication with Raleigh Fingers, telling Raleigh to stay away. But the Mets now have two shots at tying the ball game with a hit. And here's Jerry Grody, who's grounded to second and lined to center. Big lead for Jones off second. Fingers looks him back in, and there's a drive hit deep to left. That's out if it's fair. Foul ball. That one just Ooh. missed the foul ball. That's the area where the ball really carries in this ballpark. Down that line. And he got all of that one. Raleigh hung that pitch inside, and he'll do that off the sidearm delivery to right hand batters quite a bit. He was lucky getting away with that one. Well, it very hard by Grody hooking away from that foul ball. Fingers got away with a mistake. Popped it up. Campanaris with the shades down. Green is going out. Jackson coming in. Who's taking over? Jackson. Caught that ball with a glove up. I don't think he intended to catch it that way, but Green has got a long way out. And near collision. Green not hearing Jackson until the last possible second, then getting out of the way. That outfielder controlling the entire play. Waving Green off. Good move by Jackson. As he slipped by him, the collision could have jarred it loose. There are two down, and here's Don Hahn. Score two to one, Oakland over the Mets. It's the sixth inning in Oakland. Raleigh's going almost exclusively with a fastball right now. Two strikes now. Tony, I think in the first game of a World Series, you really see, particularly with a man in scoring position, what the scouting reports say about the batters because the pitcher is going to go right at the batter with the pitch that the scout says you can get him out on right now. No doubt about that. 
And of course, what you mentioned a while ago, Bando yelling out to fingers, get ahead of the hitter, and he is right now. Let's see if he wastes one. Fossey giving a low outside target again off the sidearm fastball, swung on and missed. It gets away from Fossey. Hahn is going to make it to first base. Going to third on the play is Jones. Plate umpire says the man did not foul tip the ball. Well, we had just mentioned that Fossey was giving a low outside target. That pitch came high and inside, and Ray just couldn't get up there and corral it. He came from the side, a crossfire. Hahn never saw the ball. I don't believe he was completely surprised. So was Fossey. Fossey was shielded on the swing by Hahn. Did not see the ball. The ball going off his glove. It could be a big play. Now here is the tough switch hitter and Bud Harrelson. Hitting right-handed today, he walked in the third inning and struck out against Kenny Holtzman. Fastball strike on the outside corner. Good sinking fastball, strike two. Struck him out with a blazer on the inside. No runs and a hit, two left on. The score in the middle of the sixth inning, Oakland two, New York one. We've talked many times during this telecast about the poor background for the hitters in this ballpark today. Let's listen to the words of Joe Rudy and what that background looks like. Tony, it really is because the background they have here isn't wide enough, and uh, they took the tarps down they normally have over the seats, and the people are going to be sitting there in the light shirts, and uh, a left-handed pitcher is tough for right-handed and vice versa. Here is Joe Rudy starting the sixth inning. He has hit two line drives today, one caught by the shortstop, and the other into right field for a base hit that knocked in the go-ahead run. There it is. Rudy bunts the ball and it hits him in the foot and the plate umpire calls him out. Dick Williams is going to argue about this. He doesn't think Rudy was out of the batter's box. Plate umpire Marty Springstead challenged by Rudy and Williams. They don't think they were out of the batter's box when the ball hit him and Springstead didn't ask for any help. He called it right now. And I think that's what Dick Williams is arguing. Also Joe Rudy. Why don't you appeal or we want to appeal the play and have Augie Donatelli in a conference with you, but he called it all on his own. Apparently, Rudy out of the batter's box. Tell you, Williams and Springstead have had a thing going all year long. If you want to know the truth, they have really had some tough, tough arguments this year. A uh, catcher will get the put out on this. Right. One out, sixth inning, and that brings up Sal Bando. There was no question about the ball hitting Joe Rudy. The question was whether or not it hit him while he was in the batter's box. But Harrelson working on another grounder throws him out. Two out in the sixth and here's Reggie Jackson. Jackson is grounded to short and popped up to short. I tell you for a guy who missed a couple of weeks or so. At the end of a season, it's kind of tough to get out of a slump when you see the pitching of Baltimore and New York Mets. It's tough to get out of a slump against that kind of pitching. Well, if he doesn't get a hit today, he's made two good plays in center field. Curdy's had the best year defensively and on the bases he's ever had with the A's this year. He really put it all together and I think is a bona fide strong candidate for most valuable player award honors in the American League. I wondered how much that bad injury he had last year that shelved him in the World Series would slow him down this year but evidently not much early in the season he seemed to really be afraid of testing it he almost stole no bases at all he didn't run hard but about mid season he started really going and has no fear at all of the hamstring pull snapping again Monty we look down and see Tug McGraw starting to warm up now so both these Managers Yogi Berra of the Mets and Dick Williams of the A's have gone to their aces. With our portable camera looking from behind the home plate area on the first third base side. Reggie Jackson gets a walk and that brings up Gene Tennis. He really hit tennis on the fist with that one. Mian throws him out and that's all for Oakland after six innings of play here at the Coliseum in Oakland. It is the A's two and the Mets one. Game two of the World Series here tomorrow. Then we'll switch to New York. And Tuesday night, our coverage will start at 8 o'clock Eastern Daylight Time with the baseball world of Joe Garagiola. Then game three of the series, the scheduled pitchers, two right-handers, Tom Seaver and Catfish Hunter. And now Yogi Berra makes his move. 
He lifts Matt Lack. He's going to pitch it, Kenny Boswell. Base hit for Boswell to start the Mets in the seventh. Boswell crawls off the bench, gets a hit for Matt Lack, and now the top of the batting order, Garrett. Line drive to Green on one hop. That should be a double play to Green to Campanaris, and then to tennis, they got them both. Boy, Garrett hit that ball hard. And there's a play that's going to afford a little bit of second guessing, I think, on the part of sports writers, fans, and I guess us broadcasters. Why not a bunt? Moving that tying run into scoring position at second base. Dick Williams is out to talk to Raleigh now. The pitchers friend the double play, and the A's have had two so far today behind their pitchers. Here's Mian, who backed Joe Rudy up a little bit beyond the scouting report, I believe, with that triple he hit into left center in the fifth inning. Joe was playing it very shallow, and he's deep now. Like that one. A line drive to Burt Campanera as he picked it right off his shoe tops. In the seventh inning, the Mets don't score, leaving it Oakland 2, New York 1. We've already seen one good defensive play by Buddy Harrelson, the shortstop. Let's take a look at another one, and we expect that from these two shortstops in this ball game. Almost handcuffed by it. Burt Campanera scooping it right off the ground, showing the umpire that it did not bounce, did not short hop it. And here, Monty, is Doug McGraw now, who staggered through the early part of the season, and that was brilliant the last two months. McGraw with a screwball, that's his trademark, but he does have a fine fastball and curveball. He can overpower you, usually has good control, control he acquired late in the season after that shaky start. He was sensational the last two months of the season. He appeared in 60 games, winning five and losing six, but he had 25 saves. His earned run average, 3.86. First man he faces, Jesus Alou. Hit him right on the fist. Watch Harrelson at work. Got him. Good play on the run. He makes difficult plays look easy. <laughs> He gets a good jump. He's actually moving before the pitch. He has such good instinct and is leaning with a pitch. He got the big hop. Watch him get rid of the ball with an accurate throw. One of the tops in baseball. Threw off the right foot, but it makes no difference with that kind of momentum going towards first base. Here's Ray Fossey, the A's catcher. It one hit in the playoffs, but it was a big one, a two-run double off Jim Palmer. There it is again, and it's hit to the shortstop, Harrelson, and that today has been a bad place to hit it if you want to get on. Two away. I think it was McGraw who coined the Mets slogan this year, you gotta believe. Dick Green. Up for the third time in the game, he's walked and struck out. Harrelson to Milner and three times in a row that combination worked for the Mets here in the seventh. The score after seven innings in Oakland is the A's two, the Mets one. In the dugouts, Yogi Berra on the left, Dick Williams on the right. It's tense here in Oakland. We are in the top of the eighth inning. Oakland has a new center fielder, Vic Davalillo. Williams has Raleigh fingers on and he's pitching to Willie Mays and the first pitch is over call strike one. May's got a solid single to left in the first inning. He's one for three today. There's the big breaking ball. No balls, two strikes. When Davalillo went into center field, Reggie Jackson moved from center over to right. That surprised you, did that, Monty? You thought they put Canigliero in. Billy, uh, fine defensive center fielder. There's a call strike three. Raleigh fingers followed that sidearm breaking ball with a buzzing fastball over the outside corner leaving Willie up there. But Davalillo has played some outstanding defense for Oakland. When he came over here he was strictly being purchased as a pinch hitter for Oakland to shore up the bench. But what he has played in the outfield has really been outstanding. He has made some great plays in the playoffs. You and Tony had that great pickup he made in left center field of a line drive out there the other day. Cleon Jones is two for three today, a double and a single. He scored the Mets run. Here's the slider. Sal Bando. The Gene Tennis. 
And they're two away, and Fingers definitely is locked in right now. He has good stuff, good rhythm right now, and he's had the ball down. The best he's looked of any inning. He's gone two and two-thirds innings of relief, allowed two hits, struck out three. By the way, if the A's would hold this lead, Holtzman would be the winner. Milner is one of the few Mets who can hit the ball out of the park. Base hit, right field. There was the curveball, and Raleigh got it up. Milner single, and that brings up Grody. You see, uh, Fingers, he was mad at himself. He turned his back to the plate and threw his hands up. Why did I make that pitch? Curtain to the Mets run very much. How about Milner? You, no. you, you see, they don't steal very many bases. They stole the fewest bases. Only 27 bases during the year. They ranked 11th. The Pirates were last in stolen bases, only 23. They'll play some hit and run. It would be a different situation against some clubs in late innings of a two to one game. Fly ball off first. Out in no man's land. Dick Green is after it. So is Tennis. Tennis picks it off right in front of Green's head. Very fine play by Gene Tennis, who's converted to become an outstanding first baseman this year. Ordinarily, this would be the second baseman's ball. Green coming over as quickly as he could, but with a right-handed hitter, he had to go a little bit farther. I don't think he could have gotten it had Tennis not. The score, two to one, Oakland. And now, program note, Dom DeLuise demands to know about his mother's secret romance on Monday's episode of Lots of Luck. The comedy continues later on Monday night at the movies. And Brian Keith and Doris Day star in the hit movie comedy with Six You Get Egg Roll right here on NBC. There's five with egg roll. And here we are now in the last of the eighth inning. We're waiting to see if Raleigh Fingers is going to come out and bat. He's scheduled to lead off in the last of the eighth. And defense right now is the difference in this game. Felix Mion, who made only nine errors all year, let one go through his legs. That led to two unearned runs for the A's in the third inning, and those two unearned runs have been it. The A's leading two to one, and Fingers gets a hand from the hometown Oakland fan. Curtis, at one time in his career, has hit one out of a ballpark. He had a home run down in Texas last year. Screwball, and did he have Raleigh fooled or not? Way out in the front foot, Fingers strikes out. There's one away. Boy, there are a lot of pitchers throwing that, and I don't know why it is, but it seems that most pitchers who throw it are left-handers. We talk about the screwball all the time. It just rotates the wrist the opposite way, and a left-handed pitcher throwing to a right-handed batter, the ball will come in and break away, down and away. The curveball breaks into the right-hander. And it's the change of speed on the pitch that is, makes it effective about as much as how it breaks. It really doesn't usually break all that much, anything like a curveball, but it's the change of speed, too. Campy bunts to the first baseman. Too close to the line. He tries to slide under him. And the first base umpire and the home base umpire are saying, who's going to call it? Nobody's called it yet. Campy apparently got under the tank and made it to first base. And Yogi Berra's out to argue about it. Marty Springstead, the plate umpire, Augie Donatelli, the first base umpire. Campanera slid under the tag, it looked like, and the question was, did he go out of the base running path, or did he stay in it? Well, that's a typical Burt Campanera's play. He was beaten badly, 30 feet from the bag, and just slid right under the first baseman. Here's a couple different angles on this. Now there's Milner. He's still in the three foot lane. And Milner appeared to miss him. As he shot right by him. Watch him go by him. As he just accelerates there, the slide is under. And Milner missed him, trying to tag him on the back. He tried him. Hey, he tried him. He's safe. He's in the line. He's he in the line. No, he didn't play. He didn't play. He didn't play. He didn't play. Huh? Here's Joe Rudy. Oh, what a fun. Rudy throws out Joe Rudy. And the A's are playing for one more here with one out. This Grody's a good defensive catcher. 
They really got out there in a hurry. Ball almost stuck on the bat of Rudy's that time. It was so soft. Now with a left-handed batter coming up next, Sal Bando batting here. Yogi Berra is going out of the dugout to talk as to whether to pitch the Bando. Let's go with percentage, Doug. Go to the left put him on? Yeah. Did you? Go, yeah. Go with the left hand. Yeah. Yeah. All right. You go all to it. Go all right. Put him on. The percentage play involves an intentional walk to Sal Bando, then pitching to Reggie Jackson. Ground ball right at the second baseman. The percentage play work beyond throws Jackson out as he did try to pull the ball. And after eight innings of play in Oakland, the score is the A's two, the Mets one. The move pays off, but the Mets still trail two to one. Pinch hitter now for the Mets in the top of the ninth inning. Ed Cranepool, who had an outstanding playoff series for the Mets. He'll go against Raleigh Fingers, who came on in relief of Kent Holtzman. Holtzman pitched the first five innings and very effectively, allowing only four hits and one run. Out in the Oakland bullpen, the backup crew of Darrell Knowles and Horacio Pena. Crane Poole played in 100 games for the Mets this year. At one home run, had a 239 batting average. And here we go in the ninth. Line drive right to Campanaris. And I'll tell you, the A's have had a lot of line drives hit right at them today. The Mets have hit in tough luck. They've hit the ball harder than the A's all afternoon. By the way, they're down to just two left-handed hitters now. One may not be available, Rusty Staub. The other one is Martinez and Hodges. Three. Ron Hodges, the batter now for the Mets. He's a catcher. Franklin County, Virginia. Fingers starts him off with a fastball inside and low. Ball two. Frank in the outside corner. Here's a look from our portable camera. We're roving around right behind home plate now. You see Staub and over his shoulder the batter and Ray Fossey giving the sign for this pitch with a 2-1 count. Ball three, fingers. Kurt, you remember the seventh game of the World Series last year? A tense moment in the ninth inning. Raleigh hit a batter. Daryl Cheney to keep that suspense going and allowed Pete Rose to come up and bat one more time for Cincinnati, but then he got him out. Flight out to Rudy. He is at three balls and one strike on Hodges. Oh, four, he walked him, and that's going to bring up Rusty Staub. And if he could hit one out, it would be the ball game lead for the New York Mets, and they're going to have a runner. Teddy Martinez. Teddy Martinez is going to run for Hodges. That's the first man Fingers has walked in the game. Stop batting. Wonder uh, Williams thinking as Barra looks on. Normally might bring a left-hander in, but he's probably well. Here he is, wondering how bad Stop's shoulder is. That's he was waiting to make sure that Stop was announced as a pinch hitter. He is now, and this is the second trip to the mound by an A's representative out of the uh, dugout in this inning so Raleigh fingers is automatically out this rule was not invoked for the World Series last year but it is for this one now there's a break in the action here in Oakland the scores the A's two and the Mets one you saw Dick Williams move to the home plate umpire did he was he announced is he in the game stop yes he's brought in Daryl Knowles and now Yogi Berra removes Staub and is going to go with a right-handed pinch hitter, Jim Beecham. Darrell Knowles has never pitched in a World Series game. Last year, right before the American League Championship Playoff Series, Darrell, while batting, hit a ball to left field, and as he watched it fall in to left field, he started running to first base and fell down and broke his thumb on his pitching hand. The score here is the A's two and the Mets one. Jim Beecham is the batter in the attendance here today, 46,021. 
Beecham on the season hitting 279 for the Mets. As a pinch hitter, nine hits and 34 at bats. He's from Grove, Oklahoma. Darrell Knowles in this situation might have been brought in to hold Martinez close as well as to pitch. Strike call. Knowles appeared in 52 games for Oakland this year, five of the times as a starter. Won six, lost eight, had nine saves. One ball, one strike. Knowles doesn't throw a screwball as such, but he throws a turned over fastball. He throws it hard, and that's his double play pitch to right handed batters. Little looper. Dick Crane sensational play. Can't get it back to first, but what a well timed jump that turned out to be. I think after he caught the ball, he wanted to throw, but he was off balance. And he was afraid to throw it away. Then he made another shot at first. Watch him. Green has been very steady today. He's a short man, but he had perfect timing on that. He handled the double play ball in the seventh. Off the bat of Garrett, that was a wicked shot to him. Charlie Finley, the owner of the A's, the lone, the sole, the sole owner of the team now, knows his club is one out away from capturing game one. Here now is Wayne Garrett. 0 for 4 today. He's hit into two double plays. Tony Kubek is on the field. He'll be interviewing one of the players after the game. Fly ball right field. This could be it. Reggie Jackson coming in. He's there. He's got it. And the A's win the first game of the 1973 World Series, setting off the Finley fireworks. And uh, I'd have to say it was defense for the A's today. The error by Felix Neon. Cost the Mets the ball game in the third inning. He'd made only nine errors all year. He let a ground ball go through his legs off the bat of Campanaris. It should have been the third out. A run came in to score, then Rudy single, and both A's runs were unearned as they win it two to one. We'll be back. Tony Kubek will be interviewing some of the stars. We'll have more of a recap right after this message. All right, let's quickly go down to Tony Kubek. All right, with me with the manager of the Oakland A's, though still the world's champion, winner of this first ball game, being congratulated by Charlie Philly. Charlie, congratulations. You got another one under your belt. Good to see you looking so good. Thank you very much. You got a good man here, don't you? Dick, you had to make a decision in this ball game. You didn't have many decisions like it all year long. A two to one ball game, Holtzman, no designated hitter in the World Series. You took him out. Well, uh, Ken hit the double and had to run hard and slide hard in the second. And then uh, the ball that got through me on, uh, on the next hitter, he had to run real hard all the way uh, home. And, uh, of course, we got another run after Campy uh, steals second and Rudy gets a base hit, but it took, uh, took a little steam out of him. He went 11 innings uh, four days ago. He only had three days rest. And prior to that, uh, he had missed. We let him bypass one turn because he had uh, thrown more innings this year, Tony, than he had all year uh, uh, in his previous uh, career in one year. So he was a little... Uh, uh, tired. Uh, he got the victory, uh, a well-deserved victory for him. A uh, great relief job by Raleigh Fingers and Daryl Knowles. So uh, we're just quite pleased to get off on the right foot. You know, it's difficult from up where we are, Dick, being so far away from home play. But it did not appear, even though it was a low-scoring ball game, that the p pitchers were particularly sharp until McGraw came in. Then Raleigh seemed to have a good inning. Well, I'll tell you, uh, Mr. Matlack, uh, even though he got the loss on it, both runs were unearned. He's very, very tough. I was proud of all three of my pitchers. Mr. McGraw, I have caught his act before. Uh, I think there's going to be uh, a, a low-scoring series. Uh, I'd be surprised if it wasn't. I think games will be like this, and anything can happen. We'll probably be back here next Sunday also. Did you find anything out about the Mets in today's ball game that you didn't know before? Uh, no, not really, because we know they battle, and they'll come back even harder tomorrow. This is why they won their division. I think they're a super team with a super manager, and uh, it's our privilege to be playing against them in the World Series. We're taking to tomorrow's ball game, Vita Blue. What about Vita? Vita has been just great all year long, and uh, he's geared for it. Uh, we haven't been keeping charts the la ever since we cinched our divisional title, uh, but he kept a chart today for his own uh, uh, information uh, to go along with the other information we have, uh, Tony. So. Uh, we know he's interested also. Dick Williams, good to get that first one in your home ballpark under your belt. Congratulations. Thank you very much, Tony. Our thanks to Dick Williams. Let's go back upstairs. You can see that Dick Williams is being very cautious about underrating the Mets. Again, the final score, 
two to one Oakland. In a moment, we'll continue to review the action of today's game. Reliever Darrell Knowles provides the finishing touch in the ninth with assistance from second baseman Dick Green. And the A's capture game one of the 1973 World Series. 